Hi, welcome to Cycling Vancouver. My name is Steve. This is Ride 24. Today is Saturday, April 18th, 2020. I started this ride around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The temperature was around 17 Celsius and the sky was quite overcast and gray. For this ride, I plan to ride to the touristy bedroom community of Deep Cove. This is located along the west side of Indian Arm, on the east side of North Vancouver. From my starting point at Stanley Park, there are two routes to choose from. Normally, I would ride east across Vancouver, and then cross north over the Second Narrows Bridge, and then take Dollarton Highway east to Deep Cove. However, given the pandemic and the effect that it has had on Vancouver, I was interested in seeing its effect on North Vancouver. So, I chose to ride through Stanley Park along the causeway, and then cross north over Lionsgate Bridge, and then travel east across North Vancouver along Marine Drive. This would eventually connect with Dollarton Highway, and I would follow that east to Deep Cove. quite surprised to find North Vancouver quite busy. There did not seem to be any signs of the pandemic. There was lots of traffic to share the roads with. I did not notice any boarded up shops and the parking lots had lots of cars. The ride to Deep Cove is quite popular. It is not a particularly difficult ride, but it is a bit of a journey to get there. Though there are small inclines, the ride is generally flat with some undulating areas and a descent into Deep Cove itself. The biggest climbs are coming out of Deep Cove and crossing back over a bridge. That overpass ahead leads up to the Second Narrows Bridge. That dude didn't seem to be all there. Unlike the other areas of Vancouver, North Vancouver likes to move cyclists off the road and onto these shared pedestrian pathways. Of course, eventually you need to get back on the road with traffic.
Allerton Highway passes through the Tsleil-Waututh Nation. You can see their cemetery on the south side of the road. I remember traveling through here in the early 70s. It was very noticeable then as we would leave first world surroundings, pass through a third world area and the return to first world surroundings. I was quite confused as a young boy why this area looked so run down and different at the time. Years later I would come to better understand Canada's reserve system and our treatment of indigenous people. I have since enjoyed many hours at the cultural and recreation center on the reserve, but I have never forgotten those childhood memories. As with all the other parks in Vancouver, Kate's Park is closed to vehicle traffic because of the pandemic. The blossom trees look spectacular though. It's a nice long descent into Deep Cove. Of course, that means a long climb back out. For the return trip, most riders will retrace the Dollarton Highway route. You can also take Mount Seymour Parkway West, but that starts with a significant climb. I chose to return on Dollarton Highway. Having ridden it twice in the past, I know that I'm not ready for the Mount Seymour Parkway yet. Next time I ride out here, I'll take on that climb.
I rode south across Burrard Inlet over the Second Narrows Bridge. This route connects with Union Street. Union Street is a very popular east-west cycling corridor. I rode Union Street West back into downtown Vancouver.
I decided to take the Dunsmuir Viaduct bike lane. This bike lane will take me right to my building in Coal Harbor, which is very convenient. The Deep Cove ride is a nice easy ride. I do not ride it frequently. In fact, I've only ridden it about four or five times. It works best as a destination ride. Head there and stop in Deep Cove for lunch, enjoy the park in the inlet, and then return back downtown. <laughs> 